I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Joint Internal Services and Finance Audit and Budget Committees. The first action is Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is to adopt the agenda. I take I a motion. The agenda. Support Zinner. Thank you, Commissioner Romano and Zinner uh, made the motion and support it to adopt the agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Item 4 is adopting the minutes of the Internal Services Committee from March 7th and the Joint Finance Audit and Budget and Records and Public Safety Committee from February 15th of this year. Oh, motion. Thank you. Support. Thank you. Commissioner Nard and Grot made the motion and support it to ad approve the minutes. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Public participation. This is the first opportunity for public participation for anyone who wishes to speak for a maximum of three minutes on any item that's on today's agenda. There'll be a second public participation later for any item. Anybody for today's agenda, public participation. Last call, public participation. Thank you. We'll close public participation and go to the Internal Services Department recommendations. Um, the first item A, Information Technology Maintenance Agreement for second quarter 2023 for $1,051,056.92. I'd like a motion to pass the full board. So moved by Nard. Support Hall. Thank you. Commissioner Nard and Hall made the motion and seconded it to move this item to the full board. Jacob. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, this is one of our maintenance items that we bring to you pretty much every month. Uh, the three items today uh, in here is the Microsoft licensing, uh, cost of Microsoft licensing, also campaign finance, as well as uh, Axon Enterprise for the Sheriff's Office. Seeing no speakers, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is for Royal Roofing for the Verculin Building. Okay. WIC roof replacement, $657,770. I'd like a motion to move the full board. So moved. Support. Lord Perna. Thank you. Commissioner Romano and uh, Zinner made the motion and supported it to move this item to full board. Lynn. Good afternoon, commissioners. As indicated by the chairman, this item pertains to replacing a portion of the Verkulin building roof. We're actually replacing approximately 31,400 square feet of roof surface. The purchasing department solicited bids for this uh, project. 177 vendors were notified of this solicitation. 29 vendors viewed the documents, and four sealed bids were received and publicly read by purchasing March 9, 2023. The scope of the work includes the removal of the existing roof and also perimeter curbs and drain flashing. They will also inspect the roof deck and make any repairs if required. Uh, in addition, they would install insulation, cover board, and apply a three-ply roof system utilizing a cold process. They would also install then new roof drains, perimeter curb, and flashing. 
they would install asphalt coating and also gravel on top of the roof system. And they would re uh, apply a reflective coating on all the perimeter curb and drain flashing. We are requesting authorization to issue a purchase order to the low bidder Royal Roofing Company in the amount of $657,770. Funding for this project is available in the 2023 Facilities and Operations Operating Budget. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're putting, we're spending almost a million dollars on a roof over for Culean. Does that mean that the, that we're not going to be uh, considering replacing that building? Because there was discussion about replacing that building with architects going through and looking at a way to better utilize that facility over there and you know maybe tear it down or or do something different over there they have not concluded to tear that building down it'll come to before the board at a future meeting but they are not going to demolish that building so they're going to keep the basic size of that building uh, there the might square be footage an addition proposed and a renovation of the existing but this won't be so okay well it's an obvious question I guess you wouldn't be proposing to spend a million dollars on a building that they were thinking about tearing down but I had asked that because that was discussed previously and uh, so all right very good um, I support the action thank you Commissioner Romano thank you chair hi Lynn Lynn, do we have any guarantee on this when the guy puts it up? Any warranties? We actually have a 20-year warranty. The first two years is with the installer, and then we have 18 years with the manufacturer. Thank you. That's all I have, Chair. Thank you. Is this the same technology that's on the roof now? Or uh, you yes. said something about a three-ply roof? Yes, we're just using a coal process. Okay. And that way you minimize any of the odors that you normally get in roofing projects since it's the building is occupied. Okay. Thank you. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. 6C is for a budget amendment from facilities and operations for the Office of Public Defender Renovations for uh, um, the Clemens Center for 125000 I would like a motion to move the full board. Board Nard. Thank you. Commissioner Wallace and Nard made the motion and supported it to move this item to full board. Lynn. Uh, this item is a renovation of approximately 9,600 square feet of former retail and restaurant space at the Clemens Center in order to accommodate the Office of Public Defender. Uh, as you may know, the mission of the Public Defender's Office is to provide legal defense representation to the indigent population charged with a criminal offense. This renovation will provide sufficient space for current and future needs, and it will provide adequate space for attorneys, support staff, interns, investigators, and social workers. This project will also include much needed training and meeting space. The purchasing department solicited bids for this uh, item on the Mitten site. 589 vendors were notified. 56 vendors viewed the documents and five sealed bids were received and publicly read by purchasing on February 23rd, 2023. This renovation is primarily grant funded with a county contribution of 125,000 towards the cost of construction. We are therefore requesting a 2023 budget amendment in the general fund from non-capital outlay to the public defender fund and a corresponding budget amendment in the public defender fund to increase transfer in to the general fund and corresponding increase in the capital outlay expense in the amount of $125,000. We are also requesting authorization to execute the contract with the low bidder Quadrate in the amount of 
$120,051.19. And if I could also add a note, in a future meeting, IT will be bringing uh, forward the IT patch package for this project, which is also grant funded. Thank you. Um, Commissioner, the item on the uh, the item that's open right now, the motion is for 6C only. So this is about the 125,000. We'll get to the contract in a minute. Commissioner Hall. Thank you, Chair. Hi, Len. I'm glad you read that transfer in, transfer out, general fund, capital outlay, <laughs> grant. Um, just for future reference, I don't know if we're writing these notes or you are, that might as well be in, with all due respect, Japanese, because this makes absolutely, even hearing you read it, it didn't make any sense. So what, to summarize, what I heard was, we have a grant application and we still need to supplement it with $125,000. Well, that was the requirement for the grant is a county contribution towards that construction costs. Okay, so if we contribute the 125, then we get the grant. Is that it? Yes. And the that grant has been picks much up the rest easier of the to cost. read than <laughs> that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Romano. But I never talked this much, but I get, you're saying that we're going to be spending a million two hundred and forty five thousand dollars in renovations. Does that sound correct? Yes. What are they doing? I mean, I heard some of the things, but that's a lot of money. <laughs> Costs are definitely very high. So, and our portion is only 125,000, and the rest is coming from grant. Yes. Can you find some more deals like that for us? <laughs> well, really, it's Mr. Tomko that runs the Office of Public Defender that uh, applied for this grant. Great. That's all I have. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Lynn. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Now we'll move on to 60, which Lynn mentioned a minute ago. Uh, Quadrate Construction LLC, Office of the Public Defender, to actually, for the contract, $1,120,051.19. Lynn, did you have anything more to say about that? Uh, no, then, other than they are the low bidder. Chair, I'll make the motion to refer to full board. I'll support. Thank you, Commissioner Hall and Romano made the motion and supported it to move this item to full board. I see no speakers, please vote. Motion passes 12 to zero. Thank you. I'd like to take item 6E and F together. Budget amendment for facilities and operations to do a change order number four for the boat hoist system for the Sheriff's Marine Division Boathouse project for $549,243.88. I'd like a motion to move to full board. I'd like to move that to full board, please. Support Pernum. Thank you. Commissioner Zinner and Nard made the motion and supported it to move this item to full board. Lynn? Uh, this item pertains to providing five boat hoist systems, which would be one for each boat well that is contained in the Marine Division project currently under construction. As you may recall from a prior meeting of this committee, that during the course of construction, the Marine Division personnel raised concerns relative to the lack of boat hoists on the project. Uh, Marine Division personnel uh, believe that if they were provided with boat hoist, this would allow them to raise the boats out of the water in a heated garage. This would, uh, the benefit of this would be it would save the cost of shrink wrapping and also uh, winterization of the boats. It would reduce the potential for liability or injury by Marine Division personnel when they would have to pull the boats out of the water and then trailer them off site. It would also allow for on site maintenance of the vessels during the winter months and the hoist, uh, raising the vessels out of the water actually will extend the life of the boats 
uh, by reducing what is referred to as the wave action. It would keep the hull clean, cleaner. It would uh, minimize or prevent blistering of the hull. And it would also extend the life of the painted bottom. Uh, as you may recall, uh, this came before the board in a prior meeting as a not to exceed. Obviously, the direction of the board was to get a firm price. Uh, so the design was concluded. Uh, the information was forwarded to the general contractor in the form of a bulletin. Uh, and then uh, they would price out the bulletin. It was vetted by Plant Moran Cressa along with the architect and engineers on the project. We are therefore requesting a 2023 budget amendment transferring $549,243.88 from the general fund fund balance to the capital improvement plan for the purpose of providing the boat hoist. And we're also requesting authorization to execute change order four to Rockford Construction in the amount of $549,243.88. Thank you. Commissioner Lucido. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you for bringing back an exact amount um, that makes it a lot easier um, for me to approve this budget item. And um, the only other thing is I was just going to want to make one quick comment, and that's that, you know, when we're planning a project like this, I know that these boat hoists are very important to the boathouse. I would just like to see that like, them put in their initial plans instead of coming back later because you're trying to lower the cost of the initial plans, which I know is what exactly what you know, I was told what happened. So, I mean, just so we know moving forward, like important things like this are accounted for so we can make sure we do have the funds to, you know, purchase them. That's all and I have. We will definitely a, a, attempt to minimize any kind of uh, change order like this. Thank you. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0 to 1. Commissioner Grote abstaining. Thank you. I'd like to turn the meeting over now to uh, Commissioner Kraft, the Vice Chair of the Finance Audit and Budget Committee. Thank you, Chair Van Sickle. I'd like to call to order the Finance Audit and Budget Committee. I am standing in for Commissioner Sabatini today, so here we go. Uh, first item of business is item A, the Macomb County Investment Plan. Uh, plan. I will take a motion to recommend that to full board. Support Perna. Motion from <laughs> Wallace, support from Perna. Mr. Biondo, do you want to say a couple words? Hello, Commissioners. For the record, Joe Biondo on behalf of our Macomb County Treasurer, Larry Rocca. I'll be brief. I just wanted to highlight maybe for the folks at home that I'm here today uh, after appearing back at the February finance meeting on this uh, issue where the consensus at the time was let's make sure we get the policy right. We had indicated at that meeting that we wanted to submit this for accreditation as a model investment policy. After the collaborative, collaborative approach that we've had with the Board of Commissioners, we want to especially thank uh, Chairman Brown, uh, Finance Chair Sabatini, and Vice Finance Chair uh, Phil Kraft and assisting us in really making this a perfect policy. It's our professional opinion that this will be accredited uh, in the discussion we had with the leadership team here. I think we came up with a great policy, and we just want to thank the board for that collaborative approach. And going forward, uh, once this gets approved at the full board meeting, we intend to submit it for that accreditation, and we will list the board of commissioners along with the treasurer's office as the, uh, the uh, departments that will receive that uh, notification after the review is done. I'm certainly happy to answer your questions, but again, thank you for the uh, assistance in making this a great policy for the residents of our county. Thank you, Joe. Don't go anywhere yet. Commissioner sure. Romano. Oh, thank you, Chair. You know, Mr. Uh, Biondo, I just want to comment to you and the Treasurer. I'm looking at this uh, Macomb County Treasurer's Office progress report that you put out. Yes, sir. And, and I'm looking at the number of foreclosures that have been stopped or stalled or people are making payments on, and I really think that's a, a feather in, in the Treasurer's hat and yours also. I mean, this is something that... Uh, uh, people want to stay in their homes, sometimes have a difficult time, and we're having difficult times now. And I can see by the numbers here that the Treasurer's Office is working with these people, and that's, uh, that's congratulations to you and 
Commissioner, or to uh, Treasurer Rocco. That's all I have. Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you, Commissioner Ron. And again, you know, it's a team effort, and without the support of this board, really, we wouldn't be able to do what we do for our, our taxpayers. All right, seeing no other speakers, I just want to say really quickly on behalf of Chair Sabatini and myself, thank you to you and your team and to the board and, and our team here. This was a massive collaborative effort, um, took a lot of time, took a lot of due diligence, and we appreciate all of your hard work from your team and our team as well. Um, we think this is a great plan that's going to hurl us into the future, and we're looking forward to, to using it going forward. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everybody. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to take items B and C together, a budget men amendment and a purchase uh, for Longhammer Ford for two 2023 Ford Transit low roof cargo vans, uh, the amount of $96,164. Take a motion to recommend that to full board. So move, Paul. Support Nard. motion from Haw, support from Nard. Nicole? Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, so the first one is going to be a budget amendment for facilities and operations uh, to facilitate the purchase of two transit vans. Uh, the amount is $96,164. So to put it in layman's terms, we're basically, um, FNO had a little bit of money left over in some unfilled um, positions. So we utilize that money to purchase the vans. Uh, so that money is going to need to get transferred into the non-departmental ca capital outlay account, which is where I purchase all of the vehicles from. Thanks, Nicole. Any other, any speakers? Okay. Seeing none, please vote. Lynn's smiling back there. She's excited to get some yeah. Their fleet's pretty bad. <laughs> she's, she's right. Yeah, their fleet's She's not showing it. I, yeah. I can feel it on the inside. Well, she's got her poker face on, but it's pretty yeah, bad. Yeah. When will we receive delivery? Um, so these two Excuse vans, me, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't know if you recall, but last like October or August, September-ish, we got word that we had like 12 hours to put in an order for all of our vans and pickup trucks. So we got pre-approval to do that just so we can secure a spot um, because they don't actually go into production until we secure our spot <laughs> because they can't just phantomly, you know, add buyers. So when doing so, it didn't actually mean that they were going to go into production, but now that they are in production, so I should see them hopefully by the beginning of summer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Motion passed 12 to 0. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to item D, budget amendment, Sheriff Patrol Vehicles 2022 purchase in the amount of $94,843. I'll take a motion to recommend to full board. So moved. Support. Motion from Wallace, support from Van Sickle. Nicole? Okay, so this one too. So last year, um, we came before you guys to request the purchase of a couple vehicles. One was for New Haven for the Sheriff's Department, and then one was for a hybrid interceptor. They completely... Um, cut off my hybrid interceptor order, so I had to cancel that. <coughs> so I had to order a different um, vehicle. That one is the one that I'm going to re be replacing this with. Um, it's just a regular gas one, but in order to do so, I need to roll that money forward because it didn't actually come in last year. So I'm requesting to move money forward from fund balance from 2022 to non-departmental non capital outlay for 2023 to purchase all my vehicles. Thanks, Nicole. Any you? speakers, questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Next is item E, purchase. One hammer, four, three, 2023 Ford Transit, 350 low roof, 15 passenger vans for the sheriff's office in the amount of $147,282. I'll take a motion to recommend a full board. So moved. Support Zinner. Motion from Wallace, support from Zinner. Nicole? So these are actually part of that same thing that was pre-approved in August and September. Uh, these are prisoner transport vans. They're just over mileage, and they're used constantly to transport prisoners to and from um, our jail from different municipalities and vice versa. Um, they're used to do a lot of the runs for the sheriff's department, too. These are just going to replace three that are currently in the fleet, and those uh, three will go into an auction in October. Questions on this item? Comments? None, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. 
Thank you. Lastly, for Nicole, I'd like to take items F and G together. We have a budget amendment and a purchase for Gorno Ford 2023 Ford F-250 Super Cab 4x4 pickup for animal control in the amount of $53,450. Take a motion to recommend a full board. Move motion to recommend full board. Motion from Haas, support from Romano. Nicole? Um, so I'm looking to get a budget amendment uh, to purchase a 250 Super Cab pickup for animal control. Um, this this truck came into vehicle maintenance, which is you know our inter our internal um, mechanic shop. It has a lot of motor damage, so it needs a complete new engine. And additionally, the whole truck is pretty much rusted out. The lift gate's rusted. Um, the wench barely works. It goes around the entire county picking up dead carcasses. So I'm looking to get a budget amendment for that one. Um, again, we're going to move the money. Um, this one is coming from. Sorry. From Gorno. It's coming from Gorno. Um, oh, we're, I'm taking the money from supply, non-departmental supplies and services um, where there's an excess in there, and then I'm going to move it to the non-departmental capital outlay, again, which is where I get my um, vehicles from. Um, it's coming from Gorno Ford. It is in production as we speak. It's not on the ground, um, so I'm able to get it upfit just how we wanted it. Um, and it has to be a 250 because of the amount of weight that all the carcasses, you know, because it's more than just one. Any questions for Nicole about animal carcasses? No? <laughs> I have one. <laughs> <laughs> we, it's crazy how many calls we take about, I, like, dead animals, and we're like, well, sorry. <laughs> I had one last week. So um, with the purchase of this, and now we have to wait for it to get here, what do we do in the meantime when we don't have a functioning well, truck? Well, I talked to Chief Randazzo yesterday, and somebody actually dropped a dead deer off right in front of their um, doors yesterday. So there's that. Um, do, do, yeah, do we have a backup plan? Is there a backup vehicle? Do we, we don't contract have a with somebody? We don't have no, vehicle. nothing that can fil facilitate that because it needs a lift gate and a wench because they're just heavy and there's no way we can like heave them over the side of a pickup truck. Right. I just don't have anything right now. So as soon as it touches ground, it'll. I have the tailgate or the lift gate and the wench already ordered. So once that comes in, we can get it upfit right away so it can go back on the road. But in the interim, it's... A lot of phone calls. Okay. So Did I, your car commissioner? No, definitely not. <laughs> but I think it might be pertinent to talk to Chief Randazzo about a backup plan because I've had constituents call me recently saying there's dead animals all over the place and there's no vehicle to pick them they up. They call so, the Department of Roads all the time, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. So mm -hmm. thank you, Nicole. Uh, commissioner Zinner. Um, thank you, Chair. I, I, I don't know if this has ever been done before, but in this situation, is there a, a vehicle that might be for sale anywhere? that could be used if it was feasible uh, would, would need that that the um, animal control would, would need, would have to have. Uh, is it possible to consider purchasing one uh, if it was viable, of course, in this addition interim period? To, in addition to this one? Well, when is it coming in? It's in production. So yeah, so it's not, could be. Yeah, so we, we need something. I mean. We, we, we need something. So uh, can we purchase a used vehicle for what we need? I mean, is that possible to do? It's probably and possible. And sell it afterwards. But it's also possible to maybe contract with a company that has those vehicles already ready to go as well. That's why you go. I, that's why I said maybe this is something we need to talk to the chief about a contingency plan for if and when this does happen, which it has Yeah, happened. I mean, he has other vehicles, but they all are obviously SUV, so you can't, you know, right. he, that's the only truck, that's the only open bed truck that they have. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Chair Brown. Well, <clears throat> we've tossed some carcasses in the back of pickups before <laughs> with some little boys I used to know, but, um, but. You won't go far. But they're not available anymore. But with Department of Roads, Department of Roads at one time did that. Um, and I think that, you know, they got front end loaders that could be used and, and, and work with them. And I mean, it's a discussion that has to be had internally with uh, um, Chief Randazzo and, and facilities, but um, we have to do something. We can't have, we, we can't be delayed. I mean, especially the weather's getting warmer, they're gonna start to be a little bright. And out of the north, then we got deer laying all over the place, and we got to take care of it. And uh, so, I agree with Commissioner Kraft that a uh, discussion needs to be had. And so, um, 
we'll take it up and see what we can come up with. But thank you, though, for getting one, being you know, thinking ahead and getting in the queue and having one in production right now for us. Yeah, we very wise planning and good job, you and your whole staff, for, for doing that. Yeah, we'll step maybe an overstatement, but it was, kind of, it was a little scary for a while, one, but, but we were able to do it. So, so I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Ha. I just wanted to follow up on all the comments that have already been made. Nicole, you've done a wonderful job for, yeah. right up <laughs> right up to this item here because <laughs> there is no plan B. There is no plan B. And that is not acceptable. You've heard everybody say that. Yeah. I think the call needs to go out in all of Macomb County. We don't have an SUV with a lift gate and what was the other item? A wench. A wench. I find that very, very difficult to believe. So Macomb County, my Macomb County fleet has nothing. My Rhodes fleet has something that could possibly do it, but that would be, you know, we'd have to I mean, obviously the funding's a little different, so it would have to go through. That's not something that I could make it's happen. Like it would, it would be, you know, Brian or possibly even Leo or. Yeah, know. just put everybody in a room together and say we've got right, an emergency to come up with a situation. Yes, we need 100%. a vehicle. Who's got one? Yes. Yep. Well, they do start. They do call roads all the time because they. I mean, we 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 field a lot of those calls because they okay. just assume because it's the roads, you know, that they call us over there. So. And even Commissioner Zinner's suggestion of trying to find a used vehicle in this period. So I could do that. I could find a used truck. I just don't like my question would be on funding, right? And then if I do do if I do buy used, right? Um, you suggested selling it right after. Well, I don't. I don't know. Maybe keep it. I. I don't know. Like if we want to add a used one, just as like a backup or as an additional yeah. one, well, we that's can do my point. You, you're gonna you're gonna need a plan. You'll have two, is what it gets down to. Yeah. But at least you'll have a plan B if A or B vehicle breaks down. Yeah. So I, I think what I'm hearing here is pursue it. Okay. Okay. I'll talk to Steve and Thank we'll you. figure it out. Talk to Steve who. That guy. <laughs> he, I was trying to keep him out of it the whole time. He heard, he heard everything he needed to hear. Thank you. He got roped in at the last second. Sorry, Steve. We're on a roll until the very end. Uh, Commissioner Grove. I just want to bring it to attention that is uh, to that issue that is a lot of negative publicity on social media that the county uh, is not doing the job. So I think we have to look to some kind of solution to before the vehicles arrive because it's not looking good and residents are talking and social media is not good. So Thank, you. I, Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Commissioner. Seeing none others, please vote. Nicole, thank you. Sorry, it's my <laughs> fault. It was okay. smooth sailing until the end. I started it. <laughs> I figured they all can't be easy, right? <laughs> Motion passes 12 to zero. Thank well, you. Actually, Nicole, that one was easy. You picked up an extra opportunity. Now I, I got to try to find another vehicle. There you go. <laughs> That's not easy. <laughs> Good Thank <luck>. you, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. Uh, next item is item nine, correspondence. I'll take a motion to receive and file the open bids as of April 11th, 2023. So moved. Support. Motion from Romano. Support from Wallace. Seeing no questions or comments, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Next item is public participation. Anybody from the public wishing to speak? Steve? No? Okay. <laughs> we will close public part participation and move on to commissioner's comments. Any commissioners? Chair Brown. The, uh, we have meetings double up this month, and they're done for a couple reasons. Uh, first, uh, make efficient use of the commissioner's time so that we don't have these coming in for meetings that have a few items on it. And also because of the calendar, the calendars, we had conflicts and con other commissioner had conflicts. So scheduling issues mandated us to have some of these meetings doubled up. So uh, just to give you some background, but it's to be the best use of your time and uh, to have some of these meetings double up. Some of them are gonna be longer. This one wasn't too bad today. There'll be other ones that'll be a little bit longer, but it was necessary to make best use of everyone's time. So, so that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Wallace. Thanks, you, Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to thank 
uh, Chairman Brown and Crystal uh, for setting up the meeting with Hunchfree. Um, I did rope you all in, so we will be coming up with some uh, better ways to reach our own communities uh, as well as uh, spreading the news of what we're doing here uh, on social media. Um, just a way for people to know what we're doing because most of the time they have no idea um, and then they see us when it's time to vote. So that's not a good look. Um, but if you have time when it is brought up to you, if you have time or can make the time, some things may only take a minute um, and uh, hopefully you can all be involved because I think it'd be important for people, people to see us in our own communities. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Song. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Hi, everybody. It's good to see all of you. I'm so happy to be back. Um, <laughs> so, as you know, last month I was um, deeply honored to have been chosen to visit Japan. Um, this was the program that was entirely sponsored by the Japanese government. And so, you know, in my opinion, um, it really speaks volumes, volumes to the fact that they are reaching across the aisle to um, foster relationships with uh, Americans, um, unlike some countries, which I won't uh, mention. But I wanted to share a little bit with you about my time there. Um, when I got there, I went to the prime minister's uh, office and met officials there. Um, and then I went to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and met officials there as well. I was a part of a, a cohort of 18 uh, Asian American leaders from the U.S. Um, to meet with uh, Japanese officials and to learn about some of the issues that they're facing uh, in their country. Um, and then I took the uh, Shinkansen, it is the bullet train, to northern Japan from Tokyo. And it would have taken an eight hour car drive, but uh, by train it was just two and a half hours. Um, so that was a phenomenal experience, and um, you guys all know how I feel about public transportation, so I'm going to continue talking about that, and I think they are just um, years of, ahead of us when it comes to uh, mobility and transportation. Um, and then I uh, spent a few days in Kuji City, uh, uh, Iweta, and learned about the uh, natural resources there, including amber, uh, which is a naturally occurring uh, fossil. Um, and then I spent a day with a Japanese host family, and uh, that was probably one of the most memorable uh, experiences that I had. Um, even though you know I couldn't speak Japanese and, and she didn't really speak English very well, we were able to communicate and I got to make matcha tea. Um, I brought back some matcha Kit Kats for you guys to try. Matcha is a huge, um, a popular ingredient in Japan. It's, it's almost like um, you know, cheese to, you know, to us. Um, and then when it was time for me to go, I was really sad because I had grown so close to the family. Um, it was a, a 70 year old um, Japanese woman and she was just the sweetest grandma. Um, I also got to wear a kimono, so um, you know, got to do that. And then I went to the ocean and just saw how beautiful the coast was and you know nothing it's nothing compared to like photos and, and video you just have to see it for yourself um, i also met some local elected officials um, and the mayor in kuji city and they talked about some of the challenges that they were facing and i thought that it was really um, reminiscent of some of the challenges that we're facing here they have um, you know in the country they are dealing with an aging population uh, low birth rates um, and in more of the rural communities, um, that's much more prevalent because the younger generation, they're moving into the city to find jobs and um, higher education. And so what's happened is a lot of the schools have been forced to shut down because, you know, one, um, they're, you know, they're not, um, you know, having uh, babies. And then two, the younger generation are moving out of the, the city. And so they're they're dealing with with that as well as um, you know finding ways to bring back jobs, and so one of the ways that they have 
uh, tried to deal with that is investing in offshore um, wind power and um, sustainability. And so that, that's something that they're doing. Um, and then I also met um, a professor from uh, Meiji University and some students from Tokyo University. Um, so it was just a phenomenal experience, and uh, I hope that all of you, you know, will consider visiting Japan because it is a beautiful country. Uh, it is very safe, um, one of the safest countries uh, in the world, and um, I felt very, you know, safe while I was there, even though I was, you know, by myself. Um, and everyone was just very kind, um, very uh, hospitable, and I had, you know, one of the best experiences, and I just wanted to share that with all of you. Well, we invited them to come see us. Well, absolutely. Um, you know, I've shared with them some of our YouTube video recordings, and so, you know, they will certainly be watching all of you. So if there's anything you want to say, <laughs> certainly say it to the camera. Um, Thank this, you. The, the, this, this one where I'm sharing right now that I never share, this is the one you told them to watch. Okay, great. <laughs> Please great. shut it off a half hour ago. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Commissioner. Welcome back. Um, seeing no other speakers. Move it to adjourn. Support <laughs> Zinner. We almost said that. <laughs> Please vote. We are adjourned. Everybody have a good evening. See you tomorrow. Thanks for the group.